As we all know, this year, the Commonwealth's healthcare system has been tested like never before. But through it all, the strength, determination, and resilience of our healthcare workers has been on full display. From our hospitals to our community health centers to our long-term care facilities, the healthcare workers across the system have stepped up, adapted, and adjusted, and responded to these unprecedented challenges. Our healthcare workers are perhaps the Commonwealth's greatest asset in fighting this virus, and our administration has been proud to support the healthcare community as we continue to confront this challenge together. Over the course of the pandemic, we've invested over $1 billion to stabilize our health care and safety net providers. And with our recent filing of a new nursing home support and accountability package, we've committed over $400 million to the Commonwealth nursing homes. We've distributed millions of pieces of PPE to hospitals, first responders, home care workers, and others. And we've launched a testing and tracing infrastructure that leads the nation. We still have a long way to go. Some of the smartest minds in the world are pursuing a vaccine. Many of them happen to be located right here in Massachusetts. But until then, we'll work with the healthcare community to sustain Massachusetts progress in fighting this virus. As we continue to battle COVID-19, it's important to consider the ways that the pandemic has changed how healthcare is delivered here in the Commonwealth. When I spoke at the cost trends hearing last year, which seems like a million years ago at this point, I outlined a comprehensive health care reform bill that we had recently filed with the legislature. We remain committed to enacting these reforms because we believe they'll improve outcomes for patients, drive down costs, and prepare our system for the future. And we believe that this proposal is now more important than ever. In some cases, emergency measures that we've implemented to support our response to the pandemic are highlighting the need to enact many of these reforms on a permanent basis. For example, the adoption of telehealth services during this pandemic has significantly increased access to care. During the height of the pandemic, 75% of mental health clinical visits occurred via telehealth. For some behavioral health pro providers, as many as 90% of all services and treatment were delivered via telehealth during that time. As you all know, the bill we filed seeks to create a framework to permanently integrate telehealth into the healthcare system here in Massachusetts. If the current trend of telehealth utilization continues beyond the pandemic, we can reduce costs for the healthcare system long term by shifting care out of higher cost settings. And telehealth also reduces the potential for infections to spread. And we've also seen far fewer patients fail to show up for appointments using telehealth. Our legislation also aims to address health disparities beyond this pandemic and create additional access to services. To that end, our bill allows advanced practice registered nurses to practice at the top of their license. We've seen the benefits of that expansion of scope of practice for nurse practitioners due to the emergency measures we've put in place during this pandemic. Permanently expanding the scope of practice will ultimately allow for more critical care to be provided to more people. And finally, we continue to believe in the importance of shifting the focus of our healthcare system from acute care to primary and behavioral health care. This pandemic has highlighted the importance of behavioral health care, and for far too long, these practices have not been at the forefront of our healthcare system.